Hello, my name is Henry Baum and I'm the president of the Pacific Locomotive Association. We are the parent organization of the Niles Canyon Railway. I'm standing here in front of our pride and joy. This is the SP9010. It's the sole remaining locomotive of its type left in the world. We got it, it was a rusty hulk, and we have restored it to near operating condition. Uh, over here is the diesel engine that's being rebuilt, and once that is done, we'll be able to put it back in and actually operate this locomotive, uh, something that nobody's seen operating under its own power in 60-some years. The Niles Canyon Railway has been operating here in Niles Canyon for over 30 years. When uh, SP abandoned the property, they uh, gave it to Alameda County. Alameda County then allowed us to have a license to restore the railroad and operate the Niles Canyon Railway out here. Uh, our volunteers over the years have rebuilt over nine miles of track because uh, when SP left, they took it all with them. So we put it all back and we've been running trains out here for uh, weekend excursions, education trains, charters for you know, well over 30 years now. With COVID-19, uh, this has been an unusual year we weren't ready for. Nobody was ready for COVID-19. Uh, so we, uh, we had to stop operations. We haven't run a train out here since uh, March. And sadly, we have had to postpone this year's train of lights. It's our uh, primary fundraiser, and it is probably the most popular and well-known event uh, done by the Niles Canyon Railway. Uh, we sell out all the tickets for the train, usually in one to two days. It's grown and grown and has become very, very popular. And sadly, this year, because of COVID-19, we're not going to be able to do it. Uh, it takes too many man hours. We, we would be into full decorating mode right now, and it's still the end of August, to get the train ready and uh, to put a whole train together and then not be able to run it. That would be a huge disappointment to everybody. Uh, so the best decision we could make was to just cancel it for this year. In all this time that we've been working, though, we have been able to uh, think about, you know, when can we start running trains again? And uh, it looks like uh, in September we will be able to start running uh, excursion trains once again. In fact, the uh, tickets are available on our website. Uh, www.ncry.org. The trains there won't be the same as trains if you've ridden here in the past. These are going to be a little different, much lower passenger count. We'll have people on board the trains to help you maintain social distancing and to remind you to keep your mask on because masks will be required for everybody riding the train. We will uh, be working diligently to maintain a, a, a safe and sanitary train for our passengers and we're just you know we now have everything in place to make this happen and to make it happen safely so we do want to ask you to you know check out our website and come on out and take a ride well again now i'm standing in front of our western pacific 713 it's a jeep 7 uh, it's a very, very pretty locomotive. Uh, it was recently repainted. Uh, it's here right now because it's getting a new generator installed. If, uh, you know, most locomotives in this country are diesel electric. So the diesel engine turns a generator, a big generator, a huge generator. And it takes time. It takes cranes and things like that to, to remove the hood, get the old generator out, to get the new generator in. So there's a lot of work that's been going on out here, even during COVID-19. Uh, we continue to maintain our equipment. Things continue to break, even if you're not running them. When you go to run them, you find out now they're broken and you have to fix them. It's just like at home. 
But we continue to do the maintenance. We continue to, to uh, do our refurbishment on the equipment. We've got some total uh, reconstruction projects going on as well. And we continue to work. We continue to push forward. And we continue to spend money. And once again, so I'd like you to come out and take a train ride. Uh, what's different is you're now going to have to go online and buy your tickets. You used to be able to just walk up to the depot and, and buy your tickets. Now you'll have to plan ahead. Go to the website, pick your train, decide how many tickets you need, and purchase them online. Then come on out uh, half an hour, 45 minutes before your train is scheduled to depart. Pick up your tickets at the ticket window and prepare to board the train. Uh, once aboard the train, again, we'll have people to help spread you around to maintain social distancing. And uh, because we're selling the tickets online, we know exactly how many people we can put on the train. Now I'm standing in front of our SP1195. It's an SW900 switcher that we acquired several years ago. It uh, was working up at the Richmond Pacific Railroad, and uh, when they were done with it, they, they uh, we negotiated a deal and, and brought it down here onto the Niles Canyon Railway. It has recently been repainted. When you when you look around out here at the Niles Canyon Railway, you'll see that uh, a lot of things get done, and virtually everything that is done out here has been done by volunteers. Right. Everything from uh, restoring the locomotives to restoring the passenger cars, restoring freight cars, building the track, building the yard, installing and, and maintaining the signals. Everything is done by volunteers. We do contract a few things out. This locomotive was painted professionally. Uh, we received a grant that allowed us to do that. So we were able to bring a professional painter in. One of the things that you get to do when you bring a professional is, in is you get it done immediately. When you're dealing with volunteers, projects can stretch out for weeks, months, and years, but uh, you can't beat the price. We love our volunteers. We appreciate our volunteers. We work hard to make sure our volunteers stay happy, and we're always looking for more volunteers. So. You think you might be interested in something, you say, but I don't know anything about railroads. Well, when I came out here, I didn't know anything about railroads, except I hated them because I grew up in Chicago and railroads were everywhere. Uh, didn't like them, didn't like dealing with them. But here in beautiful Niles Canyon, you can appreciate the, the equipment and really get a sense of what this stuff is, how historic it is, and how important it is to preserve it. And, you know, a lot of people just have never even really any idea of how big these things really are. This is a small diesel switcher. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty big. Uh, so, you know, and they get bigger from here. Remember when we were discussing the WP713 and the fact that it needed a new generator? This is the old generator that we took out of that locomotive place over 14,000 pounds. We had to buy a refurbished generator, uh, have it shipped out here, had to have a crane come out to pull the hood off the locomotive, disconnect all the wires. You've got little wires, you've got gigantic wires, and plus bars that have to be disconnected. Label everything so you know how to put it back together when you put the new generator in. Winch this one out, winch the new one in, get it balanced, right? Then get it mounted into the locomotive. It's a big job. It took several weeks. Uh, and, and now we're in the process of just fine tuning and, and solving the little, the little things, the little problems that crop up whenever you do a major project like this. Again, all volunteers. And uh, in, in this case, even the crane operator volunteered his time. So it, we do a lot with our volunteers when we appreciate our volunteers and we're always looking for, for more volunteers. Nobody here had ever changed a generator in a diesel electric locomotive before. So it was a learning experience and we learned by doing. We 
you want to come out and volunteer, you can learn by doing out here as well. You know, what we know, we will teach you. you know, what we don't know, we'll figure out together. So uh, that's, that's how we've survived all these years, and that's how we've gotten so much accomplished. It's by working as a team, you know, working together as volunteers, and, and just getting it done. Now I'm standing in front of the Skookum. The Skookum is the name that was given to this locomotive by its original owners. Uh, and it means strong and brave uh, in Native American. I don't remember what tribe. Uh, it's actually formally known as the Columbia River Beltline Railway Number no. 7. Uh, it's a compound. Uh, locomotive that has two sets of driving cylinders, two sets of, of driving wheels. It's quite an amazing machine. There are only three locomotives of this type uh, running in this country, and we have two of them here at Niles Canyon Railway. We own the uh, Clover Valley Number no. 4, which is back here in the barn. And the Skookum here is actually on loan to us from its owners up at the Roots of Motor Power in Willits. This locomotive sat in the woods for decades after it was derailed. Teams of volunteers over the years have worked hard to get it out of the woods and get it to a place where it could be restored. Uh, this locomotive was restored up in Oregon. Uh, but after it was restored, the owner didn't really have a place to run it. So we negotiated a deal and we brought it down here. And so far we've been running it as much as we can. Uh, we're helping them debug some of the things that they discovered hadn't been repaired correctly or hadn't been fully understood how to do it, you know, and so we're learning as we go again. And they were able to get this thing now to the point where it runs, it pulls trains, and it's really doing a fantastic job for us. Starting on September 15th, the trains will be pulled by this locomotive. We're doing an afternoon run on the 15th and a twilight run, so that's uh, even more special. So you'll be able to see the train operating at night. Following day on the 16th, uh, we're, we're doing trains in the morning and, and uh, early afternoon. Then we will repeat that whole schedule the week later on the 22nd. I'm actually sitting on the 1744. The SP-1744 is a steam locomotive that we recently acquired in kit form. This is the, the cab for that locomotive. There was a recent discussion and you were, learned a lot about this locomotive from the gentleman who operated our steam department and who actually went out there and collected all the pieces of this locomotive. The, uh, the tender is here. Soon the undercarriage will have been brought down from Colorado and we will be uh, beginning to work on that. And the boiler is going to Stockton Locomotive Works to be uh, restored there. Uh, even the boiler is in pieces so they need to be welded all back together, everything uh, reassembled, and then when that work is done, that boiler will get shipped down here and will marry the whole locomotive back together again. Uh, again, this is a project being done primarily by volunteers, uh, but even moving these huge pieces of equipment and the work on the boiler that has to be done uh, has to be done by a professional, right? Uh, people who, who really know what they're doing and, and can guarantee their work. When you have projects like that, one of the things you need, besides volunteers, is money. So we appreciate if you come on out here and ride our trains when they start running again in September uh, and help us out that way. Uh, if you can help us out by coming out and volunteer, we appreciate that. If you live too far away and uh, or just don't feel you have the abilities to, to to volunteer. Donating money is always a good way to support us and support the work that we're doing. We're standing here at the east end of Brightside Yard. Brightside Yard began life as a uh, kylite facility for Kaiser Aggregate back in the early 1920s. Uh, uh, over the years it had been used to quarry different kinds of clay and things like that. 
but it really never was a, a, a profitable operation for Kaiser either. So when we moved to this canyon, we found this big empty spot and we decided this would be a good place for us to build our, our maintenance yard. But a lot of people who've taken the trip over the years just don't realize is that after we replaced this track that SP took out, we realized that this stretch of track is part of the final link of the Transcontinental Railroad. When everybody knows the, the Promontory Summit uh, marketing uh, celebration that was done between the Central Pacific and the Union Pacific Railroads uh, on May 10th, 1869, it, was celebrating the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, but the Transcontinental Railroad really hadn't been completed at that time. Uh, it wasn't completed until September 9th, a few months later, when this stretch of track was opened up so the trains could come up from Sacramento and get all the way to Oakland. About a little more than a mile from here is where this track that Central Pacific originally put in met up with a track that had been built by the original Western Pacific Railroad. They began building out of San Jose in 1861. So even before the, the Railroad Act uh, uh, had been uh, authorized for the Transcontinental Railroad, they were already building track from San Jose to Sacramento. Uh, to, to open up railroading for that stretch. In 1866, they completed 20 miles of track from San Jose, and that put them just a little more than a mile down into the canyon here. They applied for and got their million dollars from the uh, federal government. Uh, they applied for and got their land grants from the federal government, which was what everybody wanted, was the land grants. Uh, it turned out the land grants that they got were actually for land up in Pleasanton because there was no land available uh, on the stretch where they had already built. It was either owned by the Vallejos or it was owned by Mission San Jose. But they worked out their deal and got their funding from the, from the government and then never did another step. Right? They never laid another inch of track. They never went any further. They had a lot of fights between them. The railroad owners and the contractors, and it just ended there in the canyon. Uh, so in 1869, that's when uh, Central Pacific built this stretch of track and connected up to that stretch of track, and trains could now get to Oakland. Uh, and another stretch of track that they built uh, heading towards Oakland through the town of Niles. As I said earlier, we've built over nine miles of track. Uh, so our track now runs from Niles, the district down in Fremont, comes through Brightside, goes to Sinole, goes all the way up to Verona Road near Pleasanton, and we are continuing to build. And our ultimate goal is to get to Bernal Avenue in Pleasanton. So we've got a little more than a, a mile and a half or so still to build, and we'll be uh, able to run trains from Fremont to Pleasanton and uh, and back. We're standing here on high ground here in Brightside Yard to give you a look at the entire yard, at least the, the rolling stock portion of the yard. So here you can get an idea of all the equipment that we have out here in our museum. I want to stress that you know the entire operation here is a museum operation. We are working to preserve railroad history. With, by refurbishing antique equipment, maintaining one of the most uh, best maintained and most original stretch of the Transcontinental Railway remaining in this country. Uh, the way this was laid out originally, this is still the route that was laid out uh, back in 1869, 1865. That uh, this was the way you were going to get from Sacramento to uh, Oakland. And we are preserving that, and we are keeping that safe. Uh, we're dealing with uh, 
not just COVID-19, but we also have to deal with fire protection here in the yard and in the canyon as well. So that's a big part of our, our program is keeping everything safe to the best of our ability. At the moment, I'm just standing in front of one of our recent acquisitions. This is known as a yard dog or a yard tug. Uh, it's a self-propelled piece of equipment that can be used for moving trailers around on its rubber tires, or it can be rail mounted and uh, used to move uh, rolling stock around, box cars, uh, locomotives, whatever you need to move without firing it up, or if for some reason it can't be fired up, uh, this is the item you can use to move them around. Uh, they're used in industry all the time for, for factories and things like that. This one was donated to us because the original owners had bought a new one. So they didn't need this one anymore and they uh, donated it to us. Luckily they did because their new one broke and they needed to come out here and borrow this one back uh, until their new one got repaired. So, you know, it we're handy to, to have around. Sometimes here at the Niles Canyon Railway, we're lucky and we get equipment donated to us that uh, serves a particular purpose and does a specific job. Sometimes the piece of equipment we need doesn't exist. Uh, this is a prime example of that kind of thing. When we go out east of, of Brightside, uh, there are a lot of trees that are deciduous. So that means they drop their leaves in the fall and they completely cover the right of way with dead leaves. Uh, Dead leaves are pretty to look at, but uh, they decompose into dirt, and dirt fouls your ballast. So in order to clean that ballast, right, we have a uh, general manager put his engineering cap on, and he uh, developed this device, which can be pulled or pushed down the right-of-way. It has a gas engine, huge blower, and it actually just blows the leaves outboard of the right-of-way so they can decompose in the dirt and not foul our ballast. Ingenuity like this has been the hallmark of railroads. Whenever something needed to get done and you just built what you needed to do. And we continue that tradition today. Sometimes we get lucky and we can develop the equipment that we need. Sometimes we determine that there's a piece of equipment we would really like to have but it is cost prohibitive. There's a piece of equipment known in the industry as a heavy hauler. Uh, it's a rail mounted piece of equipment that you can put big trucks on and things like that and move them around. They're very expensive. They're rare to find uh, even used because people will run them until they're uh, dead. A new one runs around $275,000. So we determined we would really like to have one, uh, but we knew we couldn't afford one, so we did what most railroads do, and we built our own. Uh, this piece of equipment is made up of two parts. The trailer part back here was part of a uh, uh, U.S. Army uh, tank truck for, for moving tanks, right? So we took the road wheels off of that and had railroad wheels installed. The gooseneck and, and fifth wheel section up there is uh, the base of an old uh, mobile burrow crane that had a bad engine and a bad housing and uh, everything. So we stripped it down and used that as the uh, basically the connection part of this. And now we can pull this thing using the, the yard dog that you saw earlier or... Uh, hook it up to a locomotive and, and pull it to wherever we need. It is heavy duty enough that we can put any of our heavy earth moving equipment on there. Well, we can actually put a fully loaded cement truck on there if we need to go out and repair a bridge or do something. It's a way to get the heavy equipment to places you can't normally get heavy equipment. Two of our volunteers built it themselves. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the Niles Canyon Railway. In this time of COVID-19, it's been a very uh, challenging for us to, to make sure people know about us. Uh, this video will go a long way in, in 
helping that. I want to invite you to visit our website, www.ncry.org. There you can find out more about what we're doing. Uh, you can go there and buy tickets for our runs coming up on the second and third weekends in September. You can find out more about our collections. You can find out opportunities to volunteer, the different volunteer opportunities that are available. Uh, once again, if you don't know, we'll teach you, and if we don't know, we'll learn together. You can also go to the website and hit the donate button and donate to specific projects or just donate in general. The Pacific Locomotive Association is an IRS 501c3 charitable nonprofit, so all of your donations are tax deductible. We do hope you'll visit the website. We do hope you'll come out and ride. We do hope you will consider volunteering, and we do hope you will consider donating. If not to us, there are other heritage railroads around that could benefit from you if they're nearby and are also going to be looking for volunteers and would appreciate your support as much as we do. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll come out and visit.